So I'm here today to say to you that we help over 800 families annually who are in danger of losing their homes, and I have the very uh, honor to introduce you to one of those wonderful people, Vivian Peep Meyer, who is coming up to speak to you, is in fact a person who has been able to save her home. She's one of those valiant souls who said, this is my home, I'm staying put. I'm retired, um, and it didn't turn out to be all that was cracked up to be after a while. Uh, I've worked for about 48 years and paid into the social security system, and uh, that's what I'm living on basically now, Social Security. Um, I feel God led me to this place, I really do, um, because I prayed before I made those phone calls. And this is where I ended up. I now have a home affordable mortgage. My mortgage is down where I can manage it, and uh, this gentleman right up here, one of Wynn's organization, was just my right hand. Uh, I've been a widow since 1983, and sometimes you need somebody just to hold your hand. This is a woman that I met in Chicago, Illinois, at Mercy Lakefront Housing, and her name is Shaisha Smith. <laughs> I'm honored to be here today, to share in this mission, to share my story of how social services like Mercy has affected my life in so many ways. Growing up wasn't, wasn't easy for me, and I wasn't fortunate to have two working parents, but I did have a mother who tried her best to raise me and my siblings. However, life took a turn for the worse when my mother became addicted to drugs. Despite being placed in DCFS custody and even being separated from my younger siblings, I was determined to finish high school and even completed a year of college. However, in my early adulthood, I found myself making bad decisions. I was homeless, a felon, and with little to no working skills. I felt I had failed to meet my full potential. But when I learned of Mercy Housing and the support one can receive, I went and put my name on the waiting list. It took two years before Mercy called me. And by June 2011, I was granted a single room occupancy apartment. It's hard to struggle and would be almost impossible to live without these services. I plan to find my purpose. I strive to prove not only to myself, but to society that I have changed. I plan to do everything in my power to stay focused on the future and not my past and give back to those who freely gave to me. Mercy and the staff and people like Sister Simone are the type of people who understand what humanity is built on. Mm. Real people and getting real reserves. Thank you. Real investments in each other. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Shane. That was me. Now I'm delighted to introduce to you, if your hearts can take it, Jeannie Kay. My beloved Margaret Mary was not only my little sister, she was also my dear friend. Even as she felt herself growing sicker and sicker, 
She kept her worries to herself. Being very private and fiercely independent, she was not the sort to ask for help. She knew she was in no position to pay for the kind of care she feared she needed. When she could no longer walk far enough to answer her front door, her friend scooped her up and headed for the ER. There, her stage four colon cancer was diagnosed, having already spread to her lungs and her liver. Her illness was not survivable. It was a diagnosis too late. But what truly breaks my heart is that my sister Margaret's story is by no means unique. <laughs> Margaret is merely emblematic of what the Affordable Care Act means to the most vulnerable among us. Though this is a political season, this is not a matter of political ideology. It is a matter of life and death. My sister made a personal goal of living long enough to vote in this November's election. She did not. And so, on Margaret's behalf, I pray that each and every one of you will vote this November as if lives depend upon it, because they do. Because when they came to Over the Rhine, they brought me Margaret's picture. And she travels with me. Everywhere. So I think I, after that, Jeannie, I think I have to take my Bible with me to the ballot box. <laughs> Margaret will look. Margaret will look. <sighs> to cry. <sighs> Thank you. Now, can you stand one more? <laughs> the beauty of this, when we really listen to each other, is that it is about touching each other's hearts and knowing that we're connected. My name is Sister Corita Ambro, and I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I work at a church that is an exceptional church in the city of Cleveland. We are the diocesan center for the deaf, the blind, the mentally ill, and the poor that live in the neighborhood. We're just unbelievably busy but what a wonderful gift it is to be part of a church that serves so many of the people that need help. At St. Augustine's, I work also in the Hunger Center. The Hunger Center is a center, not a Band-Aid area. What we are is a center that has people come to us to have their food, their clothing, their housing, whatever is needed. I can't say enough for <clears throat> the things that the church do. I do know that she can't do it all by herself, uh, but she tried, and she tried, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I never seen no one like her. Currently, I'm uh, a single parent of six daughters, and uh, I'm a uh, cancer patient. I have uh, colon cancer. Um, <clears throat> I went to St. Augustine and Sister Carita <clears throat> welcomed me back with open arms and she's been there for me, the church been there for me. Um, she helped me acquire housing, um, maintain stability in my house. Um, um, I have all my girls with me and uh, she made me <clears throat> the cook a head cook at St. Augustine, you know. <laughs> and like, uh, uh, <clears throat> my life as it was and how it is today, I wouldn't believe that I would be here in a format such as this. I mean, I was so what before, but now I'm more compassionate and uh, 
people and their concerns concern me. I hope that um, I make a difference uh, on these issues. I'm sure they're political issues. They shouldn't be. Um, it's all about humanity. The first nuns on the bus was all about pushing back against the House budget that was proposed by Congressman Ryan because he had the mistake, he has the mistaken belief that in order to take care of our fiscal, put our fiscal house in order, is that you have to cut social services. And we say, no, there's an alternative. And the fact is we have five simple words that summarize our 55 page fabulous faithful budget that was created by the Christian, Jewish, and Muslim communities in Washington, D.C. All us advocates got together and created an alternative, the faithful budget. And you can find it online at handily named faithfulbudget.org. And the faithful budget has basically five words. We summarize 55 pages into five words. It's this, reasonable revenue for responsible programs. What we just heard about were these fabulous responsible programs that are making tremendous changes, hope, community in lives of our fellow Americans. And what, is, what we need is not more tax cuts for the wealthy. Quite frankly, we need folks to invest in our society, to invest in these fabulous people, to invest in the health of our nation. And that is... We also have to launch nuns on the bus in Ohio. We're gonna get this bus on the road? <laughs> Ohio sisters, they've been so excited about Nuns on the Bus 1, they wanted to do it too. <laughs> <laughs>